Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Jillian Barry, and today's video is gonna be awesome. We have an incredible guest. Her name is Maggie J. Jackson, and she completed a super successful long-term juice cleanse in the past, which totally transformed her life. She lost so much weight, I believe 60 pounds, but we'll find out in a minute, and gave up all her bad habits, just totally transformed her life. And not only that, she has been able to totally maintain the healthy lifestyle. So she transitioned into a raw vegan after that, and she has maintained that lifestyle for a long period of time now. So we are going to talk to her about that. And she is also a juice coach. So we're going to get so much information from her on how to do a proper juice cleanse and how she maintains this healthy lifestyle and how she's accomplished all this. So give this video a big thumbs up right now. And just so you guys know, I did do a video with Maggie last year when I first started my channel on her juice cleanse results. So I will link that below. And then again, this one will be more, more focused on her expertise because she's a professional coach now and she has so much to offer. So let's get right into it. Hey, Maggie, how's it going? Good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Yay. Thanks for being on. So I would love to start with, um, maybe you you share a synopsis, a little summary of your juice cleanse, when you did it, what the results were, what led you to it and sort of all that, what the benefits were. Yeah, so I started my juice cleanse just over a year ago. Is it about a year ago? Yeah, in October of the year before last. So I've been raw for a year now and uh, I've done that for four months and I just jumped right in. I was really depressed, really anxious. I used to have heart palpitations. I was on medication for all that as well. And I just was fed up with how life was looking if it continued on that path. And luckily I came across sort of John Ray, Shane Sterling, Raw Vegan Rising. And um, I learned about juice fasting and just jumped straight in. Um, and yeah, it was the best thing I've ever done in my whole life. So yeah, it made me sort of quantum leap timelines. <laughs> yeah, so how were you eating before the juice cleanse? Like sort of standard American diet type thing? Yeah, just me. I mean, I dabbled with vegan in the past, but not really had the uh, the real connection, connecting the dots like I did with raw vegan. And um, yeah, so I was eating meat and uh, dairy and junk food, processed, and I was um, sort of a size 20, which is probably like a size 24 over there, <laughs> I think. And um, yeah, 210 pounds. So it was just, I was okay though, like that. I was just sort of plodding along through life, not really, I had no oomph. I didn't really know what was in store for me and it didn't look for it. Well, it looked bleak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how, so how much weight did you lose? So you were 210 before, how much weight did you lose on the juice cleanse? And you, you quit some habits too, right? Like quit like drinking and smoking and stuff like that too, right? Yeah, I, I quit drinking, smoking, any drugs. I was quite sort of, you know, big into my alcohol and um, and chocolate <laughs> of an evening, as some mums are, you know, like when the kids are in bed and you just want to wind down and having a, a couple of bottles of wine and some chocolate mm. and that. So, yeah, I lost about, uh, I think it was 70 pounds in the end on the juice fast. And I've just kind of maintained um, a five stone weight loss now for the whole year. Yeah. So I'm not sure what that, I think that's about 70 pounds still. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And I feel like for most people, I feel like if they're able to accomplish a long-term juice cleanse like that, that's amazing. But I feel like for a lot of people, when they go back on the food, it can spiral them in the opposite direction, right? Cause they were just on a cleanse. So it can spiral them to more eating. So how do you feel like you've been able to stay on track, like with the transition and just, with the raw lifestyle? I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the people, the community, the food. I'd really fallen out of love with normal standard food and uh, it just didn't excite me. And I was a chef before, so I, I had, you know, some skills in the kitchen, but it just was not filling my heart with joy and raw. When I see the plates of food and the juices and everything, it just really fills my heart. So it was easy for me to stay raw, I've, I found. I mean, I have, I won't, I'm not perfect. I have had slip ups, like sort of when my mum died, mm -hmm. I sort of smoked 20 Bensons and um, I, I had uh, some cooked chips and stuff like that. But the feeling, when she all cleaned out, you can sort of feel every little thing in your body. And um, it kind of sort of started giving me heart palpitations again, even from like just a couple of chips. So it really, um, 
clicked in my head that that's not my food anymore and uh, mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it's just easy for me to stay raw now with that sort of outlook and mindset that's, that's so great and I'm wondering so when you were on the juice cleanse how did you feel on the juice cleanse did you feel really good or was it hard was it hard to stick to the juice cleanse and deal with I cravings I really enjoyed the uh, militantness of sticking to the certain juices and I'd, I would I barely drunk water when I was um b- before the juice fast like I'd go sort of about 10 days without even having a sip so knowing that I was getting all my sustenance in in those um four or five juices it just mm-hmm. really um nourished my body and I was feeling so clear and happy and bouncy and energetic and I haven't really come down off of that I mean I have my days but your emotions are so much easier to cope with and witness when you've cleaned out your body whereas yeah. you used to get well, I used to get quite stuck in it before yeah and you post I feel like you post a lot of before and after pictures and it's such a huge transformation, even one of my subscribers. So yeah, my subscribers, you guys have awesome questions that I'm going to get to at the end for Magri as well. But um, I posted your photo, said I was interviewing you, which I do often ask if people have questions. And a few people said, this does not even look like the same person. So like, how do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel when you look at pictures of yourself then like versus now? And do you feel like you feel like a lot happier and like, you're so glad you took this path? I am so glad I took this path I still can't believe it looking at the pictures if I'm honest and I've only just started buying clothes in a size 10 from uh you know it's taken me a year to believe that I'm a size 10 anymore because I still feel like I'm big so yeah it's so it's so strange and like you could get the time hop on your phone and it comes up pictures and I'm I'm getting that at the moment and I just can't believe it. it it feels surreal but looking back at that um looking back at those pictures is uh I sorry that's okay <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of an eye opener they always come up when you're doing interviews that they, <laughs> they do um it's just a bit of an eye opener because I just see someone who was so depressed and sort of dead inside and yeah I just feel full of vitality now and just yeah just got a zest for life so yeah Yeah. it feels amazing you do like you're magnetic I feel like now it's like the living (laughs) foods they have so much life right so it's just like it gives you so much well I do get withdrawals if I don't have my my juices and my little microgreens and everything like yeah and do you drink juices every day now are they part of your everyday lifestyle now I do. I mean, I've tried to start to eat the fruit rather than juice the fruit um, and sort of juice the greens more to get more greens in me. So I'm doing Mm -hmm. a little bit of an experiment to see if I can get, you know, um, sort of clearer skin because I do suffer um, like a little bit of acne sometimes. It's just Mm -hmm. something I'm I'm tweaking little bits and that which you're able to do when you've cleaned out your body. It's uh, it's great. You can think, oh, I've, I've got that and I can sort that out with that. So yeah, I'm just um, enjoying the juices, but I still have my pineapple juice every now and then. That's uh, that's my favorite. That's amazing. It's so good. Well, I'd love to start out with some juicing questions so we can help people because you're a coach now too. So I'll link your information below for anybody who wants your services, because I feel like it can really help keep somebody on track too, if they have a hard time, like mentally staying on track. So if somebody's wondering, like they're thinking they're interested in doing a juice cleanse, but they have no idea where to start. Like, where do you think is a good place for somebody to start? And do you think a juice cleanse is ideal for everyone? Or do you think some people should maybe not do a juice cleanse? Oh, well, I would like to juice the whole world, but not everyone is ready at all. And you've really got to be ready for it because you you want to approach it like excited and, uh, you know, um, just ready for a complete life changing experience. And not everyone is ready for that. Some people like their lives and they're kind of stuck in stories of how things are and how they're going to be and how they could be Mm -hmm. so yeah it's probably not for everyone but I would like it to be for everyone (laughs) and do you think it's been one of the most life-changing experiences of your life without a doubt I think I would be dead now if I didn't do it I just was so depressed and I couldn't see anything that was going to lift me out of it I just was such in a dark dark hole Mm -hmm. that yeah I am it's it's really worrying yeah looking back and seeing how how badly I felt with myself just and it was no one else's fault but my own it was just me and where I was in and at Mm -hmm. yeah definitely Mm -hmm. 
Okay. okay. So with the juicing, so if somebody's looking to start a juice cleanse and they have like many times people ask me like, how much do you think they should drink in a day? Yeah. I always say minimum four, but juicing with my clients now, they get better results if they have between like four and six, sometimes six and eight quarts. So, and that's yeah. the large Mason jar, right? Yeah. Yeah. The nice big liters. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know for me, okay. So how long did you do? You did how, how many days did you do on your juice cleanse again? 120, 120. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Like that's incredible. I know when I did mine, like the key for me was feasting, not fasting, like drinking as much as I want. So do you believe in that for a successful juice cleanse for some people too? Like, like not limiting yourself? Yeah, definitely. And, um, on days when it gets hard, I will say, you know, just do all your nice juices as well that you want. Don't, don't make that a regular thing, but cause you want to get um, the astringent juices in as well but yeah it's it's about enjoying it and being excited by it and yeah just loving the living juices <laughs> yeah and what do you think about like with the living juices keeping it what do you think about the ratio for the fruits to the greens or do you think it matters people should just drink what they want or do you think they need to do like more green juices because some people say watch out for the sugars or like what's your take on all that yeah, I mean, that's something that I've sort of definitely been looking at the past couple of months with the sugar from the um, fruit juices. I wasn't too worried about it before because I think fruit juice, mm -hmm. but it is a, a process. So it is an effective, you know, a processed thing, a juice. So, um, yeah, half and half, definitely the, the, the green juice is the astringent and then the, the citrus pulls it through. Um, I mean, you can, I think different... You, you could just do all fruit juices, but I think they've all got different um, outcomes, you know, for to get out mucoid plaque. I think you definitely mm -hmm. need a good half and half mixture of astringent and uh, citrus. But if you just want to lose a bit of weight, maybe just a fruit one, if you think you can sustain on that. For me, I, I, I thought I knew that the lemon ginger blast was just sustaining me with all the vitamins and minerals that I needed. Um, I don't know if I would feel so confident if it was all just fruit, but mm -hmm. you know, different flavors for everyone. And it's a journey and you learn with your own body as well. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. Everyone's different too. I agree. And with mucoid plaque, so you brought up mucoid plaque. I would love for you to share sort of what mucoid plaque is. And your experience, because I know I believe you uh, released a lot of mucoid plaque on your juice cleanse and how you did that. Yeah, well, I waited till day 44. I thought it was never coming. And <laughs> I did do husk and clay, but I didn't do a lot of it. Um, I do it in little bouts of about five days. Then I'd have a week off and then I'd get a bit of plaque. And sometimes I wouldn't even continue the husk and clay. I'd just sort of keep going and the, with the juices and the plaque would still be coming out and uh I remember I got out uh sort of all colors and creeds it was like I had yellow stuff I had black stuff I had stuff that smelled like old KFC <laughs> it's crazy yeah, what it, can be inside of us you know people have no idea it's crazy. some people don't believe it they say oh, I don't believe that there's things in there but then you see these things and it's just you took some pictures too right when you did yours yeah, I documented that. I wish I documented it even more than I have. And uh, I put that into the, the Poo Files video, um, which is probably one of my most successful videos on YouTube. I'll link that below too. Yeah, so mucoid <laughs> plaque for anybody. Yeah, and mucoid plaque for anybody who doesn't know, it's like a hard type of plaque that can form in your colon, right? From eating things that aren't meant for our body for a number of years or decades. Yeah, definitely. And you, you know, if, even if you're taking husk and clay, you can see the husk and clay as it comes out because it comes out quite fluffy and then you'll get the mucoid plaque along with it or after or before and it's completely different um, makeup. It's, yeah. It's uh, hard and rubbery and um, yeah. And did you feel good when you released it? I heard people feel good when they I felt amazing. It. I felt really bad on the run up to releasing it. That's how I knew um, it was coming because I'd get so emotional. I'd be crying. I'd be thinking about old things in my past and um, working through witnessing situations in my head. And then I'd be like, oh, why am I so sad? <laughs> and then I'd go to the toilet and I'd be like, wow. And then it would be like, yeah, all again. So yeah, you know, it's coming. Amazing. And I, I've heard it's really difficult to get that out if you're not juicing, like if you're just eating food, you know, even if you're eating clean, yeah. I think it's hard to get that out. 
I don't think I've only ever heard of people releasing uh, sort of parasites on the fruit diet. I've never heard of anyone getting rid of plaque because I, yeah. I think it's the fiber thing. I would say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so how did you, how do you know with mucoid plaque when you're done releasing it? Do you know, like, how do people know, like, say they've got out a bunch on day 30, 34, 36, and then none has come out for a week. Like, should they keep going with the protocol? Do you think, or should they be confident in the fact that maybe they've got it all out? Well, I went from day 44 till day 88 releasing. And then after day 88, I didn't see anything else and I kept juicing for another like what, 32 days uh, after 100 it was hard I must give I'll give you that but um yeah it's it you have to give it a period of time I think afterwards to not see anything coming out yeah and juicing that long like what do you think about some people who say don't you run into deficiencies like juice only juicing that long because some people say that I mean, I, I was as baffled by it as the next person. I thought, you know, oh, could juices really sustain me? But after 20 days in, you know how you're feeling, that you've never felt like that since probably you were about 19, 18. And mm-hmm. you know that that is the way to go. And you just like, wow, this is mind blowing. And um, you do feel like you could go forever. But your mm-hmm. body does give you signs like around day 100, I was kind of a little bit fed up and I thought, you know, I, I would like to eat and um, reg- regain some kind of normality. But, um, you know, having my coach there to remind me of my goals really, really helped that. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm and glad I went you, that long. Yeah, that's incredible. That's amazing. And did you uh, supplement at all or no? Do you think people should supplement when they're on a juice cleanse or should they just forget about the supplements during that time? Yeah, I just trusted the juices. In the beginning, I was a bit unaware and I added spirulina to my um, green juice and I didn't realise it was a a fibre as such. So um, I don't know if if that can be useful. I've heard of some people having sort of spirulina drinks and that that have got sort of protein issues before they've even started. But Mm -hmm. I would just trust the juices 100%. Mm -hmm. They will uh, carry you. Yeah. And do you think that there's ways for people to do it on a budget? I know for me, when I've done it, I spend a lot of money, but there's got to be ways to do it on a budget, right? Do you have any tips for people for, for that? Yeah. (laughs) Wear a low cut top to the free and veg shop. (laughs) (laughs) I became really good friends with uh, my fruit and veg uh, men. So I did get sort of a bit of discount on bulk buying and, um, you know, grapefruit you need six uh, to make a litre so if you can get a box of grapefruit and haggle the price of those that's definitely a good key I mean I did I did spend out on the pineapples because they are so expensive but um yeah I would bulk buy the fruit if you can from an independent fruit and veg place and um and then yeah get get your uh, sort of organic celery cucumber um, anything you can with a high water content in if you can get it in the supermarket that's where I got mine mm-hmm. and do you think that there's a time of year that's ideal I know for me I like to juice cleanse in the fall because I have a hard time in the summer like with, with the farmer's markets all the good foods or like do you think a time of year is better than another for juice cleansing or it's just whenever it's your time it's your time type of thing yeah I think you'd probably be led to it when it's your time but I didn't Mm -hmm. do it in the fall as well I did mine uh, I started in October the 28th or something like that and juiced all over Christmas that's difficult if you really want to put yourself through it juicing Mm -hmm. through Christmas dinner is uh is definitely one way to tackle it head on (laughs) no kidding right wow yeah when you did it or when other people do a juice cleanse, do you think that, um, ju- do you think that enemas or colonics can be a great addition to the cleanse to do a deeper cleansing? Oh. I know for me they have been, but what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I had one colonic, uh, on day 19 actually, and I never came down from that. And I released, I think she said a, a stone. So I think, I assume that was a kidney stone or something like that. Unbelievable. And, uh, yeah it was unbelievable it was a it was a weird feeling that's for sure but as for enemas I did try them um I don't know why I tried them because I didn't really I was still quite regular uh, with the bowel yeah. movements but sort of if I thought I needed a bit more of a clean out then I would try the enemas and um I didn't really find they did much for me but I know a mm. lot of people have success with them but 
Yeah, if you've got I, something stuck, it's a good good thing to turn to. A good yeah, tool. It, yeah, it definitely is. I agree. And how do you think somebody can stay motivated? I know it can be really hard, especially in the beginning. Like, how was it for you? Was it hard? Hard? Do you remember if it was harder, like the first three or seven days, and then it got easier? Or is it the reverse situation? And how do you think people can like fight those cravings? I know it's like the hardest part. Like they say like day two or three, they're craving chips, they're craving stuff. And it's just like, it's really hard and they feel hungry. Yeah. Stay in, stay in community, stay accountable, staying in touch with friends that are on the same path. Um, so if you, if you're juicing, you kind of want a juicing buddy as well. Someone that's going through it at the same timeline as you. <laughs> I think that was, uh, yeah, that was my main thing um, that kept me going and uh, sort of knowing that I wasn't alone and mental. <laughs> And do you think it's important for them people to have like a good mental attitude with it? Because I think you can get people around you saying, this is crazy. What are you doing? You're not getting your nutrients. Did you deal with any of that? And how do you think people can sort of like have the confidence to stay on their cleanse and sort of tune out the people around them that might be judgmental about it? Again, I had a lot of that. Almost everyone um, that I knew (laughs) was judgmental about it, but um, again staying in community and coming to them with the questions that they were coming to me with and being able to sort of reiterate the answers that everybody else had that had been through it I I found just yeah priceless yeah and do you think that there's any negatives to a juice cleanse or like did you personally experience any negatives or no (sighs) get ready for a big shift um some people could see that as a, a negative I mean, it will change your life completely. Um, so if you're not used to change, I guess it would be quite negative. But otherwise, no, absolutely not. I've had not one negative thing um, and my life has completely changed. So, yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's important too. we talk about breaking the fast. I don't think people talk very much about that. And it's really important how you break a fast, especially if you do a long term one like you did 120 days. So how do you, what do you think the best way is for someone to break a fast, whether it's a short-term fast, like a three day or a week or 21 days or a long-term, is there any difference? And what do you think they should do to break the fast? Yeah. I always say to my clients that you have to spend as half the time that you done the cleanse breaking it. So it's hugely, um, in the juice fast mastery so everyone's doing 40 days so we'll say sort of spend about 15 days breaking the fast so the first five days they'll just replace one juice with a fruit meal usually about the sort of size of your fist and then the next five days you can add in some greens and take out another juice so two juices fruit meal and then um, some green salad and then the third week is when you can start adding in fats. I did not do that at all. I think on about day seven, I was trying to eat dehydrated pizza. <laughs> so yeah, it was really painful. And that is one thing that I would definitely not recommend is, is going fast with it and just treating your body like a, a temple. But yeah. it was a journey. And I did learn a lot about fats and how they sit in my body through that. <laughs> And I think it can be dangerous too, right? If some people break their fast incorrectly, like really, especially after a long time or no, I think so, right? Yeah, I I get really bloated, really gassy, really, yeah, you you do hear some stories. I've not come across many myself. I think I'm, yeah, my stomach was nicely cleaned out and I did break it, you know, I did um, fermented microbiome built up my microbiome with the fermented foods and and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so yeah I did I did do it a bit fast but I did like to think that I put some good stuff in there (laughs) yeah absolutely and then so then you transitioned to raw vegan right after the juice cleanse right yeah I couldn't wait for that yeah yeah and that I mean that's ideal for people I feel like that's amazing you did that And when you transitioned, was it easy or did you still have cravings and did you still feel hungry? And like, how did you deal with the cravings? Cause like you're successful at this. I feel like it's hard for a lot of people, right. To stay on track after a juice cleanse, to stay on a juice cleanse. You're very successful at all this. So how did you manage to fight off the cravings? And did you still have cravings when you first transitioned back to raw, like from the juice cleanse? I didn't have cravings. Uh, even the smells, the they just smell alien to me after that long. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I mean, I was just the other day. I was looking at pasta, and I was just like, "What is this? It just looks so weird. It's so hard, and it's and you've got to put it in water, and it's 
it's just not food anymore to me none of it is and uh I think that really helps with your your mindset I mean I look at just any of that food and even any of the places that you get that kind of food they're just soulless and dead and Mm -hmm. yeah and it's all energy, right? Like you take on that energy. It's part of the reason I don't eat animal products because it's like a, it's an energy, right? And they say they re- like when they're when they're killed, they release uh, all these stress hormones, and like it, they say it sits in there, and you take that in your body. It's just like no thanks, you know? Yeah, no, but to each their own. Like I don't judge, but it's definitely not for me. No, I, I even say to people, you know, if you want to eat meat again after doing this, you can, but there's a process. You've got to clean up your gut. You've got to be raw vegan for a while, depending on what you're, um, you know, healing. And then if you want to go back to meat in like a couple of years time, you, you probably can, but you won't want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. And so with the raw, what do you currently eat in a day for somebody who might be wondering? Oh, I have... Um, I have my fruit juice or my lemon ginger blast. Well, I have a celery juice to start with if I don't have my lemon ginger blast. And then I'll have a pineapple juice. And then I'll have a big salad with a nice uh, relish and loads of microgreens. And then um, in the evening, I'll have like maybe a, a, a smoothie of sorts. And if I'm working out, then I'll switch the smoothie to the to the morning or after the workout. But yeah, I keep it quite sort of samey same, but I like to switch up the salad to like, you know, the taco boats or spaghetti um and marinara sauce and yeah I love creating it and I've just downloaded that um raw vegan bundle from uh, Lisa's and uh, raw advantage and that's got some really great stuff in it vegan sushi I love and uh, yeah I just love playing with it all and making my own recipes and yeah, yeah. I love it that's awesome yeah your food always looks so beautiful I'll link your Instagram your Facebook everything below too And how have you managed to maintain it in a world that's not raw? Like, so socially, so the people around you, do you have any raw friends or like, how do you like sort of own it, have the confidence and like maintain it in social situations or when you're out and about, and maybe it's not convenient in this type of society. And also like, have your relationships shifted as a result of this huge change as well? Yeah. I mean, I, um, I ended my relationship just after a couple of months after the fast. It just, um, I realized it wasn't serving me in the way that I wanted. Um, and I don't really go out to social situations anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I do and I don't, but um, you tend to not get invited to food things anymore. So <laughs> I, I kind of make my own and invite everyone to mine and, then they've got to eat my food. <laughs> yeah. And then they're pleasant. Usually they're surprised, right? That's the case with my food too. They're like, wow, this is pretty good. And then they want to eat more and more of it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. my kids aren't raw. So that's um, a struggle, but me too. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm slipping like raw courgette in their spaghetti and uh, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even though it's like that, even though you feel like maybe you don't get invited to as much or like it's different socially, would you change it then? Would you want to go back? No, no, because yeah. I, I mean, I, I finished um, the relationship and then I've moved to the countryside and I've got my own veg patch now that I'm just working on. And it's just about creating the life that I wanted for like anyway in, in the beginning. This is the life I've always dreamed of. And over time, you know, I've got a couple of people that have come into my life now that are fruitarians sort of close by. So I, they're, they're coming in. They're coming in yeah. now. I've made space for them. So, yeah, they don't think that you're going to be sort of segregated off and have no friends because they do come back but just a better quality yeah and then I feel like it's like deeper friendships and more deeper relationships than you've ever had you know yeah yeah well like I said my viewers I posted a couple photos of you and I asked if they had any questions regarding juicing or staying on track with raw or your experience with that so they have amazing questions so I'd love to get into those So let's start with Michelle has a question. So she says, are the juices more mono or a variety? Also, what effects, what effects positive or negative has she experienced since starting the juice cleanse and raw? Mm. Well, the, um, the juices to start off with for me weren't mono uh, because I was doing some kind of like pineapple, a couple of red apples and, uh, I was making them up. But in the end, they were mono and I went through about sort of 400 pineapples. So, wow. yeah, I think mono is definitely <laughs> the way to go. Probably cost effective as well. Um, 
Positives, negative. Positives is everything's changed in my life for the better. Negatives might be the cost of produce, but again, I'm kind of working on that because I've got my own veg patch now and I'm learning. I learned that, well, I know some foraging stuff. So I've been foraging and um, I can build a quite a nice salad from my garden. So yeah, that even the negatives are sort of turning to positives. So yeah everything yeah. will change. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy for you and your transformation. And she said, do you plan on staying raw? And also do you do any intermittent fasting or any fasting like other than the juicing? Yeah, I do. I do do like the odd day here and there water fasting. I have tried dry fasting. I worked up to, I done one day water fasting, then I done two and then I done three and I haven't done more than three days water fasting. Um, and I've done like a day dry fasting. Um, I kind of intermittent fast from probably about 8 p.m. till maybe sort of 10, 11 in the, in the morning. So I'm not sure how many hours that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I intend on staying raw um, for the rest of my life. Unless something else can give me this feeling, I'm, uh, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anything else can. I don't know. I, not from my experience. No. Yeah. And then, okay, so Patricia, I have the best viewers. They're just so amazing. Patricia said, some people say that there is a sugar overload in the body. Should we be worried about things like insulin resistance? Does fructose damage the liver in the long term? Can't wait for this video, she said. <laughs> oh, um, I didn't experience anything like that. And um, with my juicing buddy, uh, Jackie Waters, who you interviewed um, a couple of weeks ago, she actually done a test with her blood sugars and um, monitored them and she was pre-diabetic and uh, they didn't even go up uh, after the fruit juices. So Mm -hmm. unless you've got diabetes type one and your pancreas isn't working properly, that's when I would say that you need to sort of take care on the juices um, and maybe eat the fruit. Um, But yeah, it would be a sort of specialized program then for a, a, a diabetes type one person, but anyone else, I think it's, you know, go for it. Mm-hmm. trust the juices have half and half make sure you get your lemon ginger blast and if if possible have more of those ones than than the fruit ones but yeah no no problems with fruit, fruit or sugar yeah i had someone on too sarah erica i don't know if you know her she did a 365 day juice cleanse because her yeah. health was in like a severe situation so it was so interesting to share her story too and she totally transformed and she drank a lot of uh she drank a lot of fruit juices it was a high sugar high like fruit uh cleanse as well so um, okay, so Marabella says, I would love to hear of Magri's uh, any spiritual benefits she can share about juicing and being a raw food vegan. Oh, well, I love, love this topic because um, I just challenge anyone to do a long term juice fast and not have a spiritual experience. <laughs> I didn't even, I thought I was spiritual, you know, I love my tarot cards <laughs> and I've got some crystals and I thought, yeah, I'm spiritual. And doing the juice fast and you're, you're you're faced with your yourself and your emotions and how you deal with things and things that have gone on in your past and traumas and how they've shaped you you just get to there's a great big mirror there and um you can't you can't run from it and uh that just really clicks into this the the spiritual experience for me and I went on with um, a spiritual coach after the juice fast and She's really helped me through the shadow work and noticing what, witnessing why I do things and um, where they've come from in my life and traumas. And I really do believe sort of cleanliness is next to godliness. And I've sort of started listening to the Bible at night before sleep, which I never thought I would do. I think all my old friends are waiting for me to, you know, say that I'm a Christian now or something. But I just, I really it all takes on a whole new meaning when you've done a juice fast I found um and uh, my mum died three months ago and when she died I just felt her around me and I don't believe that I could have felt that if I wasn't raw um mm-hmm. so yeah it's been a really spiritual experience for me and it, and it continues to be as as the journey goes on I feel like I've got the food locked now And now I'm going into the yoga and the meditation side of things and being out in nature and and being here where I am. It's just only going to get better and better, I think. Absolutely. It's the same for me. I don't I don't even think I really believed in God before I was 
wrong. I think I was more atheist. And I support, I respect what everyone believes of where they're at in their journey. And I don't think like I'm better than anyone because I believe in God or anything, but I feel so much more connected to even and on a juice cleanse. I don't think I ever felt so spiritually connected in my life than like that 37 days. It's yeah. just like crazy, I guess, because you're just so clear inside, but you're still getting all the nutrients to like, that's another thing too. Do you feel like you had a lot of energy? I know some people, when they do a juice cleanse, they say, well, I didn't have enough energy, but I think that's just like, you have to drink more juice, right? Yeah, you, ha you have to drink more juice and you've got to have the right mindset as well. If you think, oh, I'm going to be detoxing, oh, I'm going to feel like rubbish, um, then you will. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't think that I was going to feel any of those things and I was so excited by it. So I think mm -hmm. that's definitely a key mindset. Yeah, absolutely. OK, I'll get to the next question. So Ali Cat says, um, I still want to know, will living on only juices for several, several weeks to months, do the extra calories you're taking in because you're juicing more food than you actually do eat or even could eat, can it actually lead to weight gain? I've not seen it. I've not seen uh, that ever. Um, she said this question applies to people who already have been eating whole foods plant exclusive though. I just wonder if calories can still count as much when you're living on juices because you're taking in more calories when you remove the fiber that tells you when, that when you remove the fiber that tells you when you're full. I've never seen experiences of people um, gaining weight on juicing. Have you? I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. I, I have noticed, um, you know, if you're quite slim to start with and you do the juices, if you have enough juices, you won't lose weight as quick. At, um, or if you're slim to start with and you don't need to lose much weight, then, then you kind of won't. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the next question. So they know you, they said, I admire Maggie. Her videos helped me a lot and inspired me when I was going through my 90 day, my 90 day questions. How does she cope with the concerns of her clients? Like juicing will ruin your health, gut biome, pancreas, et cetera. And a lot of the negative information that floods the internet that is often heard from, from people out there, even some influencers. So that's a good point. That's a great question. Yeah. You know, some people. Some people act like it's a terrible thing to do to do juice cleanse. And again, I think everybody has to do what's right for them. And if they feel like it's a terrible thing to do, then, <laughs> then I don't think it's the, then I don't think it's the path for them, right? I think everybody has to do their own thing, do their own research. But what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, when sort of clients come to me with those sort of things, usually I'll point them in the direction of the answers that I got from my community. Um, regarding that and you know you've really got to kind of admire and look up to your coach and want to be uh, be inspired by that especially on the juice fast there's so much conflicting evidence out there but if you find someone that you really resonate like some do with me and they really believe me um then you you kind of believe that it's it's okay you know you, you know that it's all right I mean I survived four months of it like you, you're going to be okay kind of thing mm -hmm. and so they also ask how often do you juice now or does she um do any cleanses well I just done a 25 day cleanse to start off the first round of the juice fast mastery um group and I was going to go 40 days but I'd I didn't I didn't go for 40 days I'm, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't um sort of some circumstances came up and money didn't allow but I've done 25 days and um I don't think I'll do another long one again I don't mm. think I need to I feel pretty cleaned out I feel like I've got to work on my lymphatic system now and getting that moving and um, getting on a rebounder and building up now and, and getting fit. So I think my fasting days are over apart from like the odd bit of an intermittent one. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'd never say never because obviously your environment and everything that you're around, people that you're around and, and stuff. But I'm in the country and I'm not around many people. I've got fresh air, I'll have fresh food. So I don't expect to do one for a little while anyway. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And they said, um, do you check your blood work also? No, I think uh, your lymphatic system is probably more important than your blood work mm -hmm. from what I've been learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Bobby said, did, did Megri exercise while well on the fast? That's a great question. What are your thoughts on exercise during a cleanse or a fast? Oh, absolutely not. And I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I was so lazy anyway. I didn't want to. All oh, the juicing was enough work, let alone doing <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that's enough exercise, juicing all that juice every day and cleaning the machine. Yeah, juicing all that. But I mean, I did after the cleanse, I'd done that Insanity 60 and, and jumped on that for uh, three months, I think it was, 60, no, two two months. Um, but yeah, it has its place, but not on a juice fast, I don't think. Yeah, and so with juices too, do you think it's important that people make all of their own juices or do you think it's okay to mix it up a little bit with some of the fresh pressed ones from the store or what are your thoughts on on which juices you drink yeah I I always think you know fresh is best and I know they're not pasteurized or anything but they have gone through a process and you don't know how long they've been sitting there and they don't know how dead they are that the nutrients start to deplete as soon as you've made the thing so we sort of suggest to drink them within sort of two days so yeah store-bought ones I'm thinking you know they could have been there a week or or whatnot so yeah definitely fresh is best yeah you don't feel the same effect from the store-bought ones at least I don't okay so Valerie says what is the mindset she uses to stick with raw also does she follow 80 10 10 I naturally followed 80 10 10 I realized in the beginning afterwards I was putting it all into uh, my fitness pal and um, it was just all like, yeah, eighty, ten, ten, and I didn't even realise I was doing it. So yeah, my diet is kind of eighty, ten, ten, and I will sort of keep that up. Well, I, I mean, I don't limit myself. I think I can have raw food in abundance, and if I want loads of dressings and a, and a raw cheesecake, I will have it. But mm. I don't tend to naturally want that anymore. Um, so I naturally sort of gravitate towards eighty, ten, ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the first question? I forgot. Um, your mindset. What's the mindset you use? Uh, the mindset, just loving it, just f- feeling like it's food abundance and not like you're limiting yourself. It's not limiting at all. I don't have to look at any packets anymore. I don't have to conjure the devil with the ingredients. I just get to pick up food and use that and know that it's you know good for me. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's food freedom. Yeah. And what do you think um, for benefits? What do you think the biggest benefits you've experienced are being a raw vegan? compared to like before uh, just the the positive the positiveness in all of it the positive in the eating the people mm-hmm. how you feel um I mean I know it's like us English people can be quite like dreary and <laughs> not sort of <laughs> downbeat and, and that so I was very much in the beginning like here are all these positive Americans you know and then <laughs> now I'm sort of one of them <laughs> yeah that's great and your skin looks amazing and like I'm sure like your sleep and like there's been changes with all that too right yeah I mean my sleep I get a better quality of sleep I don't sleep much sort of four five sometimes six hours if I'm lucky but it is a great quality and I spring out of bed whereas before I'd sort of be dragging my heels and not wanting to seize the day but yeah I feel just positive in everything that I do even the hard times even going through my mum's death Mm -hmm. it was easy to stay positive I know that sounds crazy but it it was because I'm raw that's Mm. great then wow yeah it really equips you to just handle things that life throws at you in a much better way I feel like for the most part yeah, you, you see all the bad stuff as a growth opportunity yeah. rather than uh, depressing like I, I used to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Lewis or Louis says, my question would be pertaining to what kind of juicer she would recommend. What brand, model, vertical, uh, horizontal, low or high RPM? How much should we spend on a juicer so it lasts for a while? Any particulars to look for? Much appreciated. Oh, well, I had a matte stone, which is like, a, I think it's 2007 it was bought out. So it's a really old one. Mm-hmm. And it was 50 quid um, off of Facebook. And that carried me through my whole cleanse. Since then, I've tried, I've got a vertical one. Um, it's a Miui, M-I-U-I. And that's great. It's still not my old matte stone. I loved that one. Um, and I've tried an angel and I did prefer my matte stone. So yeah, cheap. That was that was great. I mean, if you can still get parts for it and, and stuff, if it does break, um, it, it, it's good. And you can get it on Facebook Marketplace or eBay for 50 quid. Um, I think it does matter if, it, if you do need a, a good-ish quality one. I wouldn't go for a centrifugal one at all. I, I, I did use one of those when my mine broke. I mean, you used one, didn't you? I think mm-hmm. you suggested me to use that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I didn't really get on with that. 
I did get on with it for the green juice, but not the fruit juices. It was really, mm-hmm. really foamy and didn't get much from it. But yeah, I just had a single masticating slow, slow juicer. And uh, yeah, that done me really proud. Yeah, those seem to be the best. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's worth it, I think, even though it's a little bit of extra cleaning, right? Yeah. I mean, if I could get that, I would have got the uh, the Tribe Star twin gear because you can get the, the one amount of produce that you get one liter out of with my juice. So you could get three liters out of. So you, wow. you either pay on the produce or you pay on the juicer. So wow. I, I paid on the produce. So yeah. Wow. That's unreal. Um, okay. So Diana says some tips on how she stuck with juicing for the first couple of weeks and extended period of time. I struggle with sticking for it after four days. Thank you. I was just stubborn because everyone was against me and saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I'm like, I'm doing it. And, uh, that helped me to stay motivated. And, Shane's weekly chats uh, in Raw Vegan Rising, I found them really inspiring, really, they always fitted on the week that I needed them, um, yeah, that they, they really helped, so having the community and um, the support and the accountability um, is definitely the way to go for the first couple of weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's where you can come into with the coaching, I feel like, stuff like that. And Candy says, how does she incorporate a variety of juices in her fast that yield much juice? I'm on day 13 and I find myself juicing lemon ginger blast recipe every morning later and do a beetroot, apple, pineapple, lemon, turmeric, and ginger juice in the evening. I alternate between orange and watermelon juice. Um, yeah. So basically they're just wondering how to incorporate a variety of juices that yield a lot of juice. Yeah. Um, Mm. Pineapple for me was the most cost effective because if you get a big pineapple, three pounds it was for me, and that would give me one litre. I always knew that was one litre. Whereas if I'm doing loads of stuff, um, I didn't really know how much I was spending. And yeah, it, it really helped me to stay to um to stick to the mono juices uh in the end and the, the straight grapefruit. And uh, yeah, it helps on cost and helps on juicing time, I, I, I reckon. And also, if you prep it the night before, prep for future self. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, prep it the night before and then just get up before you would usually, 20 minutes before you'd usually get up. And then it doesn't sort of interfere with your day and you're not really like sort of dragging your heels through it. Yeah, that's a great point. And mm-hmm. Claire says, um, so this is probably not a good idea when breastfeeding. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I was breastfeeding. Um, she w- is older. Um, I know a lot of people are concerned with the toxins that go through, but they're in there anyway. <laughs> True. It's in out, I think. And uh, yeah, my uh, baby, I thought she was going to taper off breastfeeding when I um, started the juice fast, but because I got was getting all that, she she ramped it up and she didn't stop. Um, for another year after that, after my raw diet. And I do believe that's because my breast milk tasted better. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's really, really good for, for breastfeeding. And you just got to make sure you get, get in more. You'd have to do a couple more juices. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so Jamie says, I would be curious to know about her sleep on the juice cleanse and being raw and also how both have affected her hair. Because, you know, some people say they have hair loss or stuff like that. Have you experienced any of that? Yeah, I mean, I um, only now I'm sort of experiencing hair loss, but it's mm-hmm. it's kind of like my old meat hair, the mm-hmm. bleached hair and the 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 stuff that was built on meat is coming out. But like the regrowth is just all on fruit and uh, raw vegan, so it's really it's coming through quite thick. Mm -hmm. So I've got quite, I'm quite positive. I'm not at the end of that journey yet, but um, yeah, I mean, I have experienced that. I mean, if you're, if you, if you're going into it and you're getting hair loss, like in the get go, then you've, you've kind of had a problem beforehand, I I would say, but yeah, yeah, don't worry, trust the juices and your hair does get rebuilt again on the raw foods. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And somebody was commenting about your eyes, how they look different color in a couple of the photos that I posted. Is that, is that just the picture? Have you noticed changes in your eye color or your vision or anything? Yeah, well, I actually had an iridology reading um, a couple of weeks ago uh, through Joy of Nutrition. And she, I sent her my eyes before the fast and after the fast and now, 
and the changes uh, were quite astounding actually like it's really cleaned up in some places I've got a really clean colon not much else <laughs> wow well that's cool that's amazing a lot of people yeah. can't see that right that's awesome yeah no they wow. have changed yeah that's really awesome um okay so somebody says what about bloating and gas what was her experience with digestion does she go to the toilet to pee a lot and how long does it how long did it take you to lose all the weight that's a good question yeah uh, I did I did pee a lot in the beginning but then it kind of regulated after about yeah about, about 20 days um and yeah I don't I certainly don't go to the loo a lot now um I did have bloating and gas after like a watermelon cleanse that I did mm -hmm. um and after I'd had things like uh, sauerkraut or too much fat um I would but then that's when you learn about your body isn't it and mm -hmm. you go through the journey of what works for you and what what doesn't mm -hmm. but yeah I, I did experience that a little bit but yeah not much it all regulated out and and the weight loss as well after the fast I um I put on like six pounds and I was really distraught. Was, oh my God, I'm going to just get <laughs> fat again now. And oh my God, what if I go back to my old life? But then it kind of went down again and then it's maintained now and I'm at my sort of comfortable weight. But I didn't yeah. really know what my comfortable weight was because I'd just been putting on weight since I was 19. So, yeah. Yeah. And okay, so the next question says, how to overcome spicy cravings? when you juice fast. So she says, I'm Asian and I always crave spicy foods, which I want to overcome. Can I add some salt to my vegetable juice? Salt. <laughs> you know what? Well, the... I use, I put... Sorry, go Chilean, ahead. Uh, sorry. No, I was going to say put... the lemon ginger blast. You can optional do a habanero pepper with that, right? Do you think that would help her or no? Yeah, I'd done that till day 90 and um, till I could feel it coming out the other end. It was quite painful. So I stopped the chili, but I had that all the way from the get go. Um, yeah, for 90 days, I had a half a habanero in, in there in my lemon ginger blast. It was really nice. Really like that. Haven't had one since <laughs> in there. But I know some people use the bird's eye chilies as well um but yeah I would say no salt I think you'll, you'll get your sodium from the uh from the celery okay mm. okay yeah. yeah that's a great that's a great point um okay the next question says how long should I eat only fruits before going on a fast I've done uh two weeks raw but only because I wanted to try out the recipes and see if it was for me I thought oh I'll see if I can sustain this after the juice fast and uh, I just had loads of fun with it, trying out all the raw recipes. Um, so I'd done that for two weeks. And then the night before my fast, I had a cooked meal and I was really sick with it. Um, so I just knew it. I knew it was for me. Yeah. Having all those uh, recipes. I've said yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks, I reckon. Yeah. And then, okay. So the next question says, how does raw vegan help with loose skin in general? Yeah, I mean, the pineapple juice has got you know, the, the things to build collagen in it. So I found that really helped uh, my tummy. I mean, I do have a little bit of loose skin, but I was really big when I was pregnant. So I've got stretch marks. So there's there's that. But um, yeah, it, it goes back quite elastic. I think more so than if you lost it weight, or lost weight on a on a meat diet. That's for mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. I think it really boosts the skin and makes it vibrant and yeah, puffs you all out and hydrates you and hydrates all your cells. So I have no doubt that I mean when I done the Insanity 60, um it was all tightening there um then. So I think with a bit more exercise, I, I think I could get a flat stomach back and I wouldn't need to worry about loose skin. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not as loose um as it was now mm -hmm. that's amazing and mm -hmm. for anybody maybe um out there who's struggling like with the motivation or they're not happy with their life and they just have a hard time getting over like the mental blocks to live a healthier life or to start a juice cleanse if they want to whether they want to be raw or just be healthier or do the juice cleanse do you have any advice um for them for maybe getting on track and like just starting like rather than keep postponing or rather than living feeling less than healthy and happy 
Yeah, to find your people. They are out there. We are out here. <laughs> you know, join a community, uh, join a juicing group, join a raw vegan group. And just, you know, even if you're still eating meat, uh, but it's something that's at the back of your mind that you might want to do in the future. Just get in there and let the seeds be planted um, and you'll be on your way before long, without a doubt. Or reach out to, uh, and I know most raw vegans are quite happy to chat. Um, about the lifestyle and about any any of these things so yeah please reach out um, I'm always welcome with things in my inbox and I'd love to point you in any direction that I can to help and if you don't resonate with me I know loads of, loads of other people that you might resonate with as well so yeah find your people find your community and they'll lift you up and carry you through <laughs> absolutely and where can everybody find you I'll link everything below as well but well, I'm just working on a website at the moment, www.juicefastcoach.com. It's not up and running yet, but that's going to be like a one-stop juice fast database um, for anyone who wants to loan warfare, anyone who wants to just speak to me about their diet. Um, because I was a chef before, I'm, I'm helping people where they're at. So, you know, if you're on a meat eating diet and you want to, you've got other goals, then, you know, we can have a free chat. Um, I'm also doing the juice fast mastery group with Shane Sterling in Raw Vegan Rising community and um, that's a really really great community as well and uh, yeah I'm on Facebook Instagram it's what you can find me everywhere yeah okay and I'll link everything below and thanks again for doing this today and thanks for everything you've had to offer to the viewers and for sharing your experience and your wisdom I really appreciate it thank you for having me and thank you for being such an inspiration for me you thank really you. have been well, that's really nice. Thank you so much. I adore you. I love you. And thanks again. And to the viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got some value from this. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you don't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.